And now we have the first quarter decline. Is there still room for optimism? Joining me right now is the Bonson Group founder and managing partner. He is author of the book, There's No Free Lunch. David Bonson is here. David, great to see you. Now the Federal Reserve is at bat this upcoming week. We will likely see uh, another interest rate hike. The Fed promising to raise rates by half a point. What does this GDP contraction do for the Fed, who's going to be raising rates? in the upcoming week. Assess the situation for us. I don't think the Fed can use this as an excuse to become more dovish. Their hawkish path is pretty well set. They're going to raise rates 50 basis points, and then there's going to be more rate hikes in the future. But I don't believe they're going to get all the way to where the market thinks. I think the Fed will capitulate the exact place I'm not totally sure. The fact of the matter is, Maria, this is very interesting. The GDP number that contracted for Q1 really did so on kind of a technical anomaly. And actually, the consumption number was better than people expected. So what it's done is nobody's talking about what I care about, which is the business investment number. That has long-term implications. We are not helping the supply side of the economy with incentives into business investment. Yeah, this is a great point because we have a major supply uh, chain problem that has log jams. Companies can't get the products uh, that they need to sell. But even Brian Moynihan was very positive on consumption. He said consumers are spending money. They may have shifted their spending from goods and buying stuff to spending on travel and and services. Uh, What do you want to own in this environment where you've got this mixed bifurcated story on spending and consumerism, but clearly worries about the the macro story potentially going into recession. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And so in, from an investor standpoint, you still want to be long energy. The exports that the U.S. is doing have still not even shown up in the GDP data. That's going to be a boost into next quarter. Thank God it's finally happening. We wish it didn't have to happen because of a Ukraine war and necessity. But nevertheless, we are exporting more oil and gas and it needs to be higher. But you want to own consumer staples in health care because they're the least impacted by recessionary concerns. They're the least cyclical people have to still buy medicine and they have to still buy diapers and household cleaning products. So we really like consumer staples in healthcare, but I don't think you want a lot of high priced cyclicality in your portfolio. The expensive tech things have gotten cheaper, but they haven't gotten cheap. And, you know, I went through yeah. the tech bubble burst with you, you know, leading the way back in the day. And you recall value yeah. did very well. Growth blew up. And I think that's the environment we're in now. Yeah, and we saw that this week with Amazon blowing up, showing the slowest revenue growth uh, since uh, the dot-com bust back in 2001, and Apple saying that, look, they're not immune to the supply chain problem. David, all fantastic points as always, and it is good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for weighing in here. David Bonson joining us on the economy and investing.